Welcome back guys. In this video, we're gonna French a lamb rack, make it look real fancy, and then I'm gonna show you how to cook it too. All right, so to start with, we need a nice sharp knife, and then we've got a lamb rack. It's got all the fat and everything on there. So let's get started. So you've got a nice lean end, and you've got an end with a bit more fat and a smaller eye. We're gonna start with this end, and we're gonna get right under this bone here. Now we shouldn't need a knife for this part. We just want to peel this fat cap off, just like so. We can put that aside. Now this is what we're left with. And what we want to do now is just mark under the eye on each side. And then we just want to connect them two lines together. You're going to be very careful to not cut into the eye. And then cutting away from yourself, we just want to take the rest of this excess fat off, go hard up against the bones. And then along here, and trim away any excess fat. Again, being careful not to go into the eye. And then what we can start doing is taking the meat and fat away from in between the bones. So you want to start, run your knife along one side, and then turn your knife. Again, don't go into the eye, and then come back up, just like so. So again, down one side of the bone, across, and back up the other side. And you want to repeat that process until you've got all the bones done. All right, so there's only a little bit of meat left on the bones. So what you can either do, you can leave it like that, or if you want to get the bones really clean, use the base of your knife, because you don't want to blunt the rest of the blade and you don't really use the base that often. You just scrape the meat away. Again, being very careful here. Flipping it over, getting the underside. And once you've got a bit of it off, sometimes you can peel the rest away. Just give it a little bit there. And there you have a nice, clean bone. And I'll also show you another little trick. Here we've got some butcher's string. You want to tie off one end to something nice and solid. So what you want to do, and we'll go the bone next to the one we've just scraped. Let's get your butcher's string, go around the base of the bone, make a nice loop around it. Pull your string nice and tight. And then what you want to do is just pull your bone away and then there you have it it all comes off much quicker and easier got a nice clean bone there so we can just repeat that process for the other bones it's much quicker and easier and a lot safer too as you're not using a sharp knife All right, now we've got some nice clean bones. If you want to tidy up the base of the bone a bit closer to the eye, then go ahead and do that. But I'm happy with that. And then now what we're going to do is take this silver skin and any excess fat off. So we've just got some nice lean meat. Again, you don't have to do this, but it does look nice and eats really well as well. So you want to be very careful. You don't really want to take off any more eye meat than what you have to. So again, a really sharp knife is quite important. I always like to just start at the base and just work my way around the eye. This is also how we trim our lamb racks for competition barbecue, because you want a nice clean bite. Don't want any silver skin that can potentially be chewy in there. 
I know some people like lamb fat, so again, if you did want to keep the cup on, by all means go for it. And let's flip it over. As you can see, there's a bit on this underside to tidy up as well. Now in competition, we'll put the best six in the box, so we'll either choose from two racks or we'd probably put from the thickest end. That bone's a little bit short, so we probably wouldn't put that one in. So we'd probably use this six here and then leave these other two off. Tiny, tiny bit of fat to trim off here and we're pretty much good. Now you can get back up in between the bones, get rid of that excess fat if you want, but I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now our lamb rack is all trimmed up, let's season it. Now honestly, salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of rosemary or mixed herbs would do the trick, but we are gonna be using some Wham Bam smoking Lamb from Heavenly Hell. Perfect lamb rub. So we're just gonna give it a nice, even coverage. Pat it in. Make sure we get the ends. Get the underside. And that is looking great. And for anyone wondering where we picked this beautiful bit of lamb up from, we got this from our butcher at Austral Meats. So now our lamb is trimmed and seasoned. Let's get this barbecue going. We'll start by getting some charcoal started. All right, so we're gonna be using the Oklahoma Joe's drum smoker today. So we're gonna open her up, take our cooking grate out, take our heat deflector out. And I've still got a bit of lump charcoal left in there from a previous cook. So we're just gonna bang that out. We get it all over to one side, and honestly, that's probably gonna be enough to get us through this cook. So we will bury a couple of fire lighters in there. And we'll leave that for five or 10 minutes or until our charcoal has started catching light. So there's nothing wrong with reusing your leftover charcoal. Once you've finished with a cook, shut your vents down, that'll kill your fire, and then anything left over you can use again like we are today. And for anyone wondering what type of charcoal we're using, this is the B&B lump charcoal. Now we've used lots of different types of lump charcoal over the years, and I haven't found anything as good as the B&B stuff. It is clean burning, it's long lasting, it's easy to light, Definitely give it a try if you can source some. So when it comes to fuel, we get asked all the time what brand we love using. Obviously B&B, and when it comes to briquettes, B&B do another great one, or Olive Pipco briquettes. So if you can source either of them products, definitely give them a go. We can't recommend them enough. Right, so it's been 10 minutes. Our fire lighters have burnt out. Our charcoal started catching light. So what we can do now is mm. shut our lid, open up our intake vent, and our top vent. So our smoker is probably going to take about 10 to 15 minutes now to preheat up to our target temperature, which is going to be around the 275 to 300 Fahrenheit or 135 to 150 Celsius range. So while that's happening, get some smoking wood ready. I've gone with a bit of olive wood from Natural Smoke. I also love cherry and pecan for lamb or Aussie oak too is another favorite. So if you've got something like that, then get it ready. Right, so our smoker is just about up to temperature. Let's get this lamb on. All right, so we'll get our beautiful chunk of olive wood on, get our heat deflector in, get our cooking grate on, and then our beautiful lamb rack. And then we'll close the lid. And for this cook, we're gonna leave our top vent wide open. And if we need to control our temperatures, we're gonna use our intake vent only. So if I need to decrease temperature, I'm just gonna slowly shut down that intake vent until it finds itself again. If I need to increase temperature, then I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna to look to stabilize off at around that 275 to 300 Fahrenheit or 135 to 150 Celsius, like I said earlier. So I reckon this is gonna be around a 45 minute cook, but as always, we're gonna use time as a rough guide and we're gonna be going by internal temperature. Now I wanna serve this lamb at around a medium doneness, so we are gonna take this until it reaches an internal of around 145 Fahrenheit or 62-ish degrees Celsius. So if you've got a meat probe, chuck one in and we'll be back once we hit that internal temperature. While our lamb rack is smoking away, I just thought I'd share another tip. If you wanted to keep them bones nice and white, you can always wrap our foil individually over them bones and that will keep them nice and white and they won't go sort of yellowy brown from the smoke and the heat in the smoker. Just a nice simple tip if you wanted to make your lamb rack really nice and presentable for when you serve it. All right, so our lamb has reached its target internal. So let's get it out and give it a rest. And we're not done yet. We're gonna heat up some of this Lamb Almighty. It's a port fig and maple glaze. It is absolutely incredible with lamb. I actually love it with pork and chicken as well. So while our lamb's resting, we're gonna give that five or 10 minutes to heat up 
and that's what we're going to serve it with. So if you did decide to leave your fat cap on the lamb rack, then I would recommend giving it a rest and then setting up for a sear and just giving it a couple of minutes fat side down on the charcoal just to really crisp that fat up. Otherwise, it's just going to be chewy if you'd only smoked it. But there's no need for us to sear this today because we've taken all the fat off there, straight smoking it. It's going to come up amazing. Can't wait to show you how tender and juicy this is going to be. So we'll come back when it's ready to slice. And then we're just gonna give it a drizzle of the good stuff. Seriously, how good does that look? It smells absolutely incredible too. Time for a taste. Oh, such a tender bite. That rub and sauce combination is always a winner. I can't recommend that enough. Do one more bite. Seriously, if you like lamb, you are going to love this. It's a little bit fancy, show your partner this, make it nice and presentable and they will love it. That is a real winner. Make sure you try it yourself at home. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.